They should have been using one of these. Though at £50,000, the Nissan Skyline GTR is too expensive for the drifters. It's within easy reach, though, of the boys in the Midnight Club. To join, your car must be capable of at least 160 miles an hour, and what the members do is meet up at a service station late at night and race down the Tokyo to Yokohama Expressway. The Porsche 911, some of which can and do do 200 miles an hour, has been the boss for years, but today most people use the Skyline. So what is this car then? Well, the 2.6-litre, six-cylinder engine has two ceramic turbochargers, which can be tuned to give as much power as your internal organs can handle. I hear 850 horsepower is as high as you can go. But the strange thing is, the chassis could take more. The chassis could take a lot more. Thanks to the fitment of several computers, each of which makes a Cray look like a golf ball typewriter, the Skyline's four-wheel drive system takes the laws of physics and wipes its shoes on them. Its staggering ability to get round corners has made it Japan's best ever race car. And even on the road, you'd have to say, it's nothing short of physically ironic. The Skyline GTR makes the Porsche 959 look like it came out of the design studios of Freddie Flintstone. And on a racetrack, the Skyline would be faster than a Ferrari 355. In a battle between Japanese techno wizardry and Italian design flair, Japan would win. The Skyline, and I'm not joking, is one of the best cars I have ever driven. But at the same time, it's one of the very nastiest cars I've ever sat in. The seats are crafted from pure Volgalor. The dash is hewn from a solid block of pure plastic. I need to get out. The trouble is, things don't get any better. You would have thought if you were designing a car to take on the Porsche 928 and the Ferrari 355, you'd make it look just a little bit more exciting than this. But maybe they can't. Maybe they don't know how to. Maybe they have the same problem with their cars as they do with their buildings. All these blocks are designed to take 7.5 on the Richter scale. But are they pretty? Tokyo must vie with Dortmund, Sun City, Arizona and West Thurrock for the title of ugliest place in the world. And one of Japan's top conceptualizers agrees. On the engineering front, the skyline is the dog's part. But as a piece of design, it's a dog's dinner. I think the specifications of the car are very good. The technology is excellent in the car, and the handling is very good. Excellent, in fact. But the design is very bad. I think there's a major problem with the design and styling of the car. It should be an interface of people's hearts and emotions in what they build. But that is not happening with Japanese cars. The manufacturers put their priority on effectiveness. That's why they have forgotten their humanness in car design. This started out in life as a standard Nissan Skyline R33. But then a Japanese tuning company spent £150,000 on the engine. So it now develops a 1,000 brake horsepower. That's 200 more than a Formula One car. It's not some fragile racing car either. In the last five years since it was built, the owner tells me it's never once broken down. And it's full of luxuries too. Leather seats, carpets, it's all very civilized. And yet there is something a bit odd. Like, for instance, I've got three boost gauges down there in the glove box. I've got another one here. I've got a water temperature for the front of the engine, a water temperature for the back of the engine, and a water temperature for the middle of the engine. I've got exhaust temperature gauges. I've got an oil temperature gauge. I've got an oil pressure gauge. Overkill, do you think? I don't.
You see, that is the engine. And these things here, well, they're the turbochargers. And look at the size of them. You could suck leaves off the pavement as you drove by with those. Amazing. Oh, and look. I'm on a drag strip. This astonishing car does not to 60 in 2.8 seconds, not to 190 in 12 seconds. Its sister car has been timed at 234 miles an hour. I thought that RS200 was fast, but this is absolutely astonishing. And how are you supposed to keep your eye on all these gauges when... Whoa, you're coming up to a corner and you know you're going to understand that locking rear diff does not seem to be doing its job. Oh. And you know you've got a thousand horsepower and it's going to burst out if you get it wrong. Oh. You need to be awake. It's like driving an explosion. It really is just Semtex with a steering wheel. Now, if you want to buy this car, it's currently for sale at £50,000, and that's amazing value, because if you think about it, it costs three times more than that to build. the most powerful car on the roads in Britain today. And I can think of no better place to finish. Goodbye.